Well, let me just give you a very warm welcome to our prayer meeting and Bible study tonight. We're delighted to see you all, and we warmly welcome you in our Saviour's name. Also to those that are listening on the World Wide Web, and we do have tonight a report from the media team. They'll be taking us through the various social media platforms that we use here in the church. They'll give some explanation as to the nature of the media work. Um, no doubt, maybe make mention of the team, as it's been strengthened over this past while. Uh, there'll be two reports, that one from our brother David, another one from our sister Janice. And she's not in yet, no? Uh, she, she, she will. <laughs> okay, so she did text me to say that she will be here. She hadn't been feeling too well, but God willing, she will be here. And uh, we trust the Lord will be with us and encourage us and help those who take part tonight. 467, we'll stand together as we worship. 467, if you're using the hymn book at home or in the church here, but other than that, it'll come up on the screen. When we walk with the Lord, trust and obey. Let's all stand as we sing. Walk with
prayer. I'm sure many of you have heard that our brother, our one of our elders here, Mr. Colin McKee, uh, met with a, an accident on the farm this morning. Uh, I think he was herding cattle uh, for some testing, and they, they turned about and knocked maybe him off the quad, and then he was trampled. I think about 70 cattle went by, and quite a number of them trampled over the top of him, saved only, I imagine, by the quad being beside him and give him some shelter. Uh, he has ribs broken each side of his body, and uh, his lung was crushed and chest and back. He has gone through surgery this afternoon, and that was to drain the fluid within the lung. And then, I hope I get this right from not reading from the notes here, he was given um, nerve blocks or a nerve blocker, uh, just some injection of medication in order just to uh, numb the nerves, in order to have the operation and also to give some relief after uh, he comes through that surgery. But I did hear that he is through surgery. Uh, he's heavily drugged at the minute, as you would appreciate, and uh, there's no doubt uh, in his recovery he will be uh, feeling a lot of pain and he'll have to take a lot of pain uh, killing medicine and we trust the Lord will perfect that which concerns his servant. We never know what a day will bring forth and uh, in one sense it's not to, to lessen what happened to your brother but uh, things could have been worse and uh, we understand that and we are thankful to the Lord that uh, he has kept his hand upon his servant. I've often said we do have a list and we uh, on occasions would and quite often would pray through the entire list on a Sunday morning. Uh, some might feel it adds to the service and you could reduce it and so on and so on. But uh, there's a great need for prayer because someday, as I did mention, someday uh, your name and mine, uh, without us realizing it, could be on the list again. And you could be top of the list, as we would remember. So it's important to pray. And I know that word has filtered through and that quite a number of folks have been contacting us, texting us and WhatsApping and uh, getting messages through to the family. And there's quite a number of folks now who know and are praying. So we trust the Lord will remember Linda and for Isaac and Faye and for Caleb and for Solomon and for the wider family circle, uh, Linda's uh, sisters, brothers and uh, the McGee family and of course Colin's family circle and friends and the, the, the workers in the shop and we trust the immediate family as well. We know something of the Lord's comfort and grace. It's been a shock to us all today hearing that news, and it's heavily upon all of our hearts. And as a church family, we just want to bring Colin and the entire family to the Lord in prayer. And there's others on the list as well, and I trust you'll continue to remember them also in prayer. Let us all bow briefly before the Lord. Father, we thank thee that we can enter into thy courts and into thy most holy sacred and loving and righteous presence. We can address thee, the thrice holy Jehovah God of heaven and of earth. We can approach thee. Lord, what a privilege to think, O God, that there are individuals and they would have security around them. We would never get within a hundred yards of them. There's others, Lord, who live in places that have a secure perimeter. Uh, you would never even get a look through the gate You'd never be able just to walk into their house. You'd never be able to walk through those security gates. You'd never get into a palace, Lord, or even some, Lord, a stately home to go and see, Lord, those that are, Lord, well known throughout the earth. We would never get an audience, Lord, uh, on the normal run of things with any, Lord, people in high places. We realize that. And we just couldn't rush in and just couldn't barge in. And we certainly couldn't come uninvited. But yet here we are with an open invitation into the very courts of heaven itself. To enter by faith into the very presence of a holy God. And to do so through the name and on the merit of the Lord Jesus Christ. The mediator between God and men. And we know that as we come in the righteousness of Christ that we are accepted before thee. Lord, we come with boldness as thy word declares and commands us to. 
and enter into thy presence with blessed assurance, Lord, with absolute confidence that we are accepted through the righteousness of Christ imputed unto us. And then we stand before thee in union with Christ. By new birth, we've been born into the family of God, and we've been made kings and priests unto God. And we thank thee, Lord, for a sense of the divine presence. And we thank thee, Lord, that as we approach thee now, we stand upon the merit of the finished work of Calvary, on the ground of the shed blood of the Lamb. And we come before thee to worship and to praise and to bless and to extol thy thrice holy name. For who is a God like unto thee? We read in the Psalms today, thou art God alone. And Lord, we acknowledge it. There is no other God but thee. And thou art omniscient. You know all things. You see all things. There's nothing, O Lord, by way of knowledge. There's nothing exists. Lord, there's nothing, Lord, in this created universe or in heaven or on earth. But Lord, you know all about it. And if there was another God, if there were other gods, you would have told us. But thou hast said, the one who knows all things, who has perfect knowledge and truth, thou hast said beside me, there is none else. And therefore we believe that thou art God alone. And we worship thee as the true and the living God, the creator of the ends of the earth, the one who formed us in the beginning and breathed into Adam and us the breath of life. And in him we became living souls. Lord, we thank thee that we were the crown of thy creative power and purpose. And thou didst design, Lord, mankind for fellowship with thyself, different from all other life. Thou didst bring us, O God, into that privileged position of communing with God, of fellowshipping with the Most High, and to have us near to thyself, and for thee to reveal thyself, and to share thy glory with us in our created position in Adam. And we know, O God, the entrance of sin. We read it in the book of Genesis, the book of beginnings, with the entrance of sin into this world, the fall from grace in Adam, plunging all mankind into a state of sin and misery and separation from from God, but we bless thee, our Father, for the glorious gospel of Christ promised even in the garden when you said to Adam uh, that you would send forth a deliverer, a Messiah, a Savior. And Lord, we thank and praise thee for that messianic promise in Genesis 3 and 15. And we praise thee it was fulfilled in the person of thy dear son at the place called Calvary. It was there that the serpent's head was bruised. And Lord, he was defeated and his power broken. And sin's punishment, Lord, was endured by thy son upon the cross. Its penalty fully met. And Lord, in the life and death and resurrection of Christ, there is now, O God, reconciled reconciliation between a holy God and sinful men and women. And we rejoice, O God, we've been brought into the family and into the fold of God. We were not born Christians but sinners, but we became one whenever we repented of our sin and believed on the Lord Jesus Christ to the saving of our soul. And we thank thee for the privileges we have as the sons and daughters of God. And Lord, we pray that we might enter into the joy of thy full and free salvation, that we may live rejoicing in all that the Lord Jesus Christ has done for our souls, all that he means to us at this present hour, and all that we will have in him in eternity to come. And Lord, we do have the best of both lives, this life and the next. And we bless thee for that. And we pray, O God, that we might rejoice in the Lord. Lord, we could not rejoice in our circumstances, even hearing the news of our brother Colin today. Lord, it would be hard to rejoice in circumstances. And yet, Lord, we can have that quiet, calm, peace, Lord, and confidence before thee that the Lord is in control. But we pray, O God, you will teach us how to live rejoicing in thy so great salvation. We can rejoice in the Lord. If we cannot rejoice in our circumstances, then we can be glad in the Lord. And Lord, we can be joyful in thee. And we can know the joy of the Lord, as Nehemiah said, to be our strength. Lord, joy is strength. And we pray, O God, you will help us to rejoice in all that we have in Christ. Help us to understand more and more the great blessings we have in our union with the Savior. Every good 
that is promised from God is ours. We're joint heirs with God and with Jesus Christ, his son. And we lift our hearts in thanksgiving and we worship thee tonight. And we pray, Lord, that thy presence that has been with us over this past while will intensify in this very meeting house this evening. And God, grant that those who have gathered, those who are bowed, those who are listening on the world wide web, oh Lord, we pray that they will know too a real sense of the divine presence, the ministry of the Lord by his word and spirit to their hearts, the encouraging, the lifting up. And Lord, we pray that there will be uh, that note of triumph in our meeting because the Lord is in the midst of us. And if God be for us, who can be against us? And nothing can separate us now from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Lord, take of our thanks for the forgiveness of all our sin, for cleansing and healing through the blood of the soul. Thank you for the infilling of the spirit, the scriptures of truth, Lord, for every temple and spiritual blessing we enjoy. And tonight, O oh God, we pray that there will be that note of not only triumph because of a shout of the king in the camp, but there'll be the note of thanksgiving, that we will be grateful, we will be sincere in our worship and praise and giving of thanks to God. And we pray you'll touch our hearts, Lord. You'll lift up our soul, Lord. You pray you'll encourage us and you'll strengthen us in our faith and lead us on and out with thyself. Do each one good. And remember those especially who cannot be here tonight. We pray for our brother Colin and we commend him lovingly to thee. Lord, like many others, we've been crying unto thee. We've been stopping uh, between things, Lord, just to acknowledge thee and ask for help. And we pray again for thy servant uh, that you will perfect that which concerns him. And while we don't fully understand some of these things that happen, that, Lord, we are trusting thee now, that thou will work it out for good for thee and for, that, for thy glory and for thy servant. Remember Linda tonight. We pray, Lord, for Isaac and Faye. We pray for Caleb and Solomon. Remember, Lord, Linda's family. Remember, Lord, Colin's family. Remember even the Lord Farm Shop and the workers there and many others, uh, Lord, who come in and out of the shop and the farming community and others who know him so well. And Lord, we are, Lord, shocked at hearing the news and we just pray for Colin, Lord, tonight. And just as a church family, uh, Lord, he's a member here with us, an elder in high esteem and a brother beloved. And we just commend him lovingly to thee and pray, Lord, for the touch of healing upon the body. Bless those who look after his case. We thank thee for those skilled in this department. We thank thee for those in the Lord medical sphere who can work with the human body and have made great advances, Lord. And we pray you'll be with them and guide their hand. And as they look at x-rays, as they look at his condition, that they will be able, Lord, with wisdom to know what to do. So, Lord, hear prayer. And, Lord, where man comes to an end of themselves, and we would humbly pray, if it pleaseth thee, that thou wilt step in, Lord, and give that healing touch. We ask these things now in our Saviour's precious name. Amen and amen. We are delighted to have some of our media team present this evening. Uh, there's always someone from the media team, Sunday morning, Sunday evening, Tuesday nights, and all the other uh, special occasions that we have here in the house to handle the sound, also to stream live, and to produce DVDs and CDs, and then to upload. Uh, there's a lot of work afterward at home, uploading the sermons and, and so on, and keeping an eye of things. And we're, we're very thankful as a congregation for our media team. Uh, they have done a, a sterling work here. Uh, for the last number of years that I've been here and years before that. And things have moved on, and uh, there certainly is a tremendous reach through the media team. And tonight we just want to bring that report from certain individuals. Uh, first of all, we're going to ask our brother David Gilmore if he'll come, please. And uh, he's going to bring uh, the first report. And then after that, our sister Janice, I did see her coming in. Yes, I see her at the back. So, and then our sister Janice, God willing, will uh, bring a report on our Facebook. Thank you, David. Just come on to the pulpit. just like to thank the Reverend Martin for asking me to give this report on the media work. Uh, the media team has continued to work efficiently during the past year, both publicly and behind the scenes. We welcomed two new members onto the team recently, namely the Martin brothers, Samuel and Timothy, 
who had previous knowledge in this area in their church in Lisburn, but had been humble enough to hide their talents prior to being exposed by their father. <laughs> At the outset, I would like to also publicly thank the team members of Paul, James, Kyle, Callum, and Joshua for all their hard work they do each week in the service for the Lord. They arrive 25 to 30 minutes before each service to ensure the equipment is, is ready to run. They also have to set up the hymns each week and the scripture reading. And when a visiting preacher comes on deputation meetings, they quite often bring a PowerPoint presentation with them. And occasionally, because of different versions of software, not all presentations are compatible. And this can cause some challenges that need solutions within a matter of minutes. And Paul is our computer whiz kid, and he can usually rectify these problems. And he guides us on the technical side. We are reminded in 1 Corinthians 1, verse 18, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. The good news of the gospel still needs to be proclaimed to the nation and to the four corners of the earth, even though the world may think it foolish. Now, I'm not going to preach to you tonight, but I do want to bring three Ps to your attention this evening, and those are not free Ps. Yes. The, <laughs> the preaching, the Reverend Martin seeks the, word, seeks the Lord for a word, not a sermon, and through his thorough preparation, he faithfully preaches the cross. Without the preaching of the word, all broadcasting is futile. The practical, the media team, through God's help, does the practical side of the serving of the Lord. Not everyone is called to preach, but we're all called to serve the Lord. In Ecclesiastes 9 verse 10 states, Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. And the powerful, it is ultimately God, the Almighty, who does the powerful work. This is God's work, not ours. We trust in God. We are merely instruments that he uses. Now, I want to give you some idea of the spread of the gospel from Cumber, Free Presbyterian Church. There's a two-fold part to media team ministry, the virtual online ministry and the practical CD and DVD ministry. I'll mention the online ministry first. As you're aware, the Sunday morning and evening services, along with the Tuesday night prayer meeting, are usually broadcast live over the internet. The three main outlets are Sermon Audio, Facebook, and YouTube. The average number of viewers at each service is about 50 for Sermon Audio, 17 for YouTube, and a similar number for Facebook. And with an average of two viewers per device, this gives us about 160, 170 viewers, people listening to the services. This is like having, as Reverend Martins describes it, a second church. And many of those tuning in listen on a regular basis. Sermon Audio has had approximately 8,000 viewers this year. Sermon Audio live broadcasts have reached into 25 <coughs> countries this year. And the UK is the most viewers followed by the US and many countries in Europe. But some surprising countries like Chile and China have listeners tuning in too. We still have freedom in our country to go to church and it's great to be able to join in fellowship with one another again. However, in places like China, such freedoms are being eradicated. In China, all meeting venues have had to close during the COVID-19 crisis, but some churches were forced to remain closed once restrictions began to lift and were quietly phased out. Last month, censors in China told a group of Christians that including the word Christ in an internet post breaks new government rules. China is amongst the 61 countries where our sermons from Cumber have been downloaded this year. Downloads occur after the sermon has been preached and people wish to listen, not just merely because they are surfing the net to see what is on or out of nosiness, but genu genuinely wanting to hear the sermon. There have been over 12,000 downloads and there are 443 sermons in audio and video format on Sermon Audio from Cumber to choose from. Again, the UK and the USA had the most downloads. 
There are many really surprising countries where sermons have been downloaded, such as India and Iran. Both of these countries are listed in the top 10 countries in the world where Christians face the most extreme persecution, even ranked higher than China. Our second main outlet used for the proclamation of the preaching of God's word is Facebook. Similar comments could be made about the spreading of the gospel on this social media platform. There are 1,830 followers on our Facebook platform, and each day a verse of the day is posted on our Facebook page. Now, without looking at your phone, can anyone recite today's verse? (laughs) Must be (laughs) Janice. John 15, verse 13. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. There have been 165 video viewings recorded live this year, and there have been over 6,000 live views and 10,000 recorded views on Facebook. You may be able to see a large number of video views for the month of October. This was due to the gospel mission we had conducted by the Reverend Martin. You remember that there was a tremendous crowd gathered here in the church on the Friday evening to hear Reverend Martin's testimony. These sermons were viewed again, up to 2,000 views. Although I cannot say for certain that the whole sermons were watched as clicking onto Facebook is counted as a view, but the Lord knows and you may see a spike in views again in July. This is due to Ford Arnold giving his testimony on the 26th of July, and many people province wide and beyond listening to his testimony. As well as streaming the services, we are continually monitoring the live streams to ensure there's no glitches and relying on any problems people may be experiencing on Facebook, etc. People are very vocal, and we've had had to reply to some very unpleasant comments But on the whole, people have been very encouraging. Our third main outlet started in April last year. We started to live stream on YouTube. And since then, we've had a steady increase in viewer numbers. This may be due to its ability to be easily viewed on TVs. In total, there have been 11,000 video clips on YouTube. We have currently 123 subscribers. And again, you can see from the bar chart that we have over 2,500 views in October last year. We know there are thousands of people tuning in, but we don't see them coming out to church. But due to the location of our online visitors, they may never be able to attend our church here in Cumber, but they are faithful in tuning in. These are the three main outlets online, but we also conduct CDs and the DVD ministry. Most people have the internet, but there are many seniors who are no longer able to make it out to church and do not have the internet. This is a service that must be provided by our church. We owe a lot to this generation, but still like to, but still like to be, as Psalm 81, 16 says, they like to be fed on the finest of the wheat and with the honey out of the rock from God's word. This is their way of staying in touch with us here in Cumber. On an average, we currently produce 15 CDs and DVDs for each service. These are produced immediately after the service and are usually delivered on Sunday evening. Printing can take a long time, usually up to an hour and a half. James spends a lot of time printing. You may see him running in and out, but that's what he's doing. We burn multiple discs at a time, and this can usually take a further half hour to burn them off and copy them, and then they're to be packaged up ready for delivery. CDs and DVDs are still in demand. Some people find it an easier way to spread the gospel. And over the last year, we have printed and distributed 2,800 CDs and DVDs. The CDs and DVDs are mainly distributed in Cumber and Newton Arts and Clinchy but end up all over the province as our church members pass them on and they travel to Ballywalter, Keedy, Portadown and Belfast. Surplus CDs and DVDs were sent to Gardenstown Free Presbyterian Church during their minister vacancy. We know that when people have finished with them, they pass them on. So this is hard. So this hard copy is also doing the rounds. We must give thanks to the support of our session and committee. This support has been unwavering and all the financial requirements needed to keep the sound desk running from week to week. 
For this, we are truly thankful. We also must give a massive thanks to Winston. During the last year, he constructed our beautiful purpose-built desk. This hides all our cables and computers, and has been a great asset to our work. Thanks very much, Winston, for all your hard work you put into making it. But he's not here tonight. We also appreciate all the people who listen in each week and who collect and distribute the CDs and the DVDs. Thanks again to the entire media team for all your commitment to turning up when scheduled on the rota. We must most definitely give thanks to God for all his help and guidance he gives us. We ask for you to continue to pray for the media team. We do cover your prayers. Please pray that we may see souls won for the Lord and Christ's kingdom extended. We acknowledge that many people briefly clip into these online platforms, which increase the numbers, but, but they may not stay for the whole gener- duration of the service. Church hopping does not benefit the soul, as the Reverend Martin has mentioned many times. We pray that when our online listeners tune in, whether live or at a later date, they will listen to the whole sermon. We also ask you to pray for the people throughout all our denomination who have found it handier to watch online rather than return to their local place of worship, especially in the evening services. This is certainly contrary to our aim of our online services. We ask that you pray for the social media companies continue to allow the gospel to be, in its entirety to be preached. We ask you to pray specifically for Sermon Audio as they seek to have their own servers so they do not have to rely on others to store their sermons. And we ask you to pray that the technology works each service. Finally, we ask for protection from online abuse as Satan fires his fiery darts. I will finish with our motto text in Matthew 16, verse 18. I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. We give all the glory to our Lord and Savior. We trust that the preaching continues the practical work continues, and the powerful work of God through the Holy Spirit continues to bring lost souls to Christ for salvation. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Um, just like to thank Reverend Martin and the session for um, allowing me to come along tonight and share with you some information on our church's Facebook page. Um, my report may not just be as well polished as David's, um, so I tend to speak maybe more off the cuff. So I hope <laughs> I get all the statistics and facts right and apologise in advance, there may be some overlap between what I'm going to say as to what you've already heard from David. But as they say, it's always better hearing something twice than not at all. So hope you will bear with me. Um, So you've got the presentation on the screen behind. And um, as already has been mentioned, um, myself and Robin, Hamilton form the Facebook team and I'm getting a little bit paranoid because this is the second year we've had a Facebook report and Robin hasn't been here (laughs) but we do work very well together and um, we um, have a good working relationship in terms of keeping the Facebook, the church Facebook page um, hopefully up to date and everything sort of um, in order. I just um, before I start, like to thank Reverend Martin and also Colin McKay. Um, Colin, myself, Robin, and Reverend Martin have a WhatsApp group set up, and that's primarily just for quick um, communication in anything that comes in through Facebook or any posts we need to um, OK or agree before they go out. Um, as you know, social media is very instant and sometimes you have to react very quickly to things. So we set the WhatsApp group up just as a very quick 
way of communicating and getting agreement on things or discussing anything that has come in or um, comments that have been made. So just publicly want to um, say that we're praying for Colin and it is a real, um, you know, just he is part of this as well um, for what we do. So I just want to um, say to Linda, Colin and the family that we are praying for them at this time. Um, so just um, making a start then on to the presentation. As David has already said, there, the church has a number of social media platforms and online um, means to which we communicate the gospel and the word um, beyond the church building. So um, as mentioned, Robin and I focus just on Facebook and more than 1 billion people have a Facebook account. So you can see immediately it is a vast market, if you want to use that word. Um, and therefore, social media ministry allows you to stay in contact with people and also that distance is no object um, or circumstance because you can reach literally anyone across the world who has a Facebook account. Um, it's also just very different from maybe the other platforms, so Sermon Audio and YouTube can be quite invisible, so you can have people listening or watching, and those can be regular people, but you don't necessarily know who they are, whereas the main advantage with Facebook is if they have a Facebook account, myself and Robin and Paul at the back, we can see people join in. So it's just like walking into church and you say, oh, there's so-and-so, oh, they're in today, or whatever. Whenever we're, um, we would also, Robin and myself, maybe monitor Facebook um, during the church service, so I would usually have it on. So if you do see me sitting with my phone on or checking, I would just keep a wee eye on comments and things um, that if anything untoward, you know, you can act quickly. Um, so it's really nice actually to see names coming up that have become familiar. I could rhyme them off here, but I'll not um, publicly. But I'm like, oh, there's so-and-so in again, or there's, you know, and you really become to know them. And I was mentioning on the WhatsApp group on Sunday or Monday, um, so-and-so joined, they haven't been in for a while. <laughs> You know, so it's good to kind of see um, who our virtual congregation are. And I have to, do, I have to say, they are very faithful. Um, it, we do have regulars each service who join right from across Northern Ireland, um, America, Uganda. There, you know, so there is a good reach of, um, of our virtual congregation. So just to mention mention that. Um, so how do we use Facebook to promote the ministry here and outreach into the community and beyond? Um, as Reverend Martin has already mentioned tonight, um, we're known as a praying church and that's because we have a, a minister with a pastor's heart and who does pray for people. And I feel it's a very visible witness. Um, for somebody who has needed prayer myself, I know the blessing that it is for people to say they're praying for you and to have your be remembered regularly, regularly in the church service. And that's a very visible witness. And um, I've noticed that people have contacted us through Facebook asking for prayer and requesting prayer. And um, I do think that's because it, it's visible that um, our minister, you know, does prayer, pray and remembers people in prayer. So I suppose what I'm saying is um, because we're visible, people kind of know what we're about. So, you know, they know that God's word's the focus of our service. Um, as David already mentioned, Reverend Martin prays that he gets a word from God and that's shared and people begin to know that. 
and I do think that's why we have a regular congregation virtually. Um, so we can reach beyond the walls of our church building and those people wouldn't necessarily come into church. So um, there is a community out there who either can't come or won't go to church that, that we can reach. Um, we also then raise awareness of our church, our meetings, our activities, and that's all very visible to the community about what we do. And as we all know, impressions, it gives people an impression of, of what we're about as a church family. Um, so how do we do this? We do this through the daily verse that's been mentioned. Robin diligently puts it up every day. I um, have to give him credit because I don't think he's ever forgotten once. So um, it is a credit to him to do that every, every day and make that commitment. We can promote meetings, um, we share updates, post photos of events, give people a flavour of what goes on within um, Cumber Free Presbyterian Church. It also allows us to be accessible so, as mentioned, that can be um, for those who are physically not able to come out or socially maybe don't want to come out to church um, and also allows us to be accessible. You have all know Jamie has come out to church and um, with his hearing problems, Facebook has allowed him to listen, as it were because the subtitles come up on Facebook, so that, that's a real advantage. Um, to having a Facebook um, site because they're automatically generated and he can sit and um, watch and read on what, what is being said. So I've already mentioned the virtual congregation that it's enabled, Facebook has enabled us to build and grow a very loyal um, virtual congregation. Um, our current number of page likes and followers, we have 1,360 people who like it, like the page, and 1,830 who follow. So a follower is, um, they will receive a notification if we post updates, so it's good to be a follower more than a liker of our page um, because they receive that through as a notification. And over the past year, so that is going from the 1st of April last year to the 31st of March this year, we've seen an 18% increase um, in those followers and likers, which is really encouraging. And just some statistics, I'm sorry if I'm boring you with, with facts, but um, I think it's worth noting we've had 522 posts on our Facebook page over that um, year period. So we've been quite active and visible and um, that encourages people to um, see us and, and build the community. With those posts, we've had over nearly 420,000 people reached. So those may not be individuals, but each post has had a reach um, that those people have seen. So that has um, been the total for that. And then from those posts, we've had 24,000, nearly 400 likes and reactions. So those thumbs ups and um, smiling emojis and all the rest, hearts, all of that. Um, so it's encouraging to see that. And then 2,700 odd comments and 2,000 shares. So it's very, very positive. Um, just to give you an idea of who the people are, uh, you probably won't be able to see it, but I just wanted to show that there's more women than men currently on Facebook. You may say, we already knew that, because <laughs> you maybe see your, your wife or whoever scrolling. But um, it just shows the age demographic, I suppose. Um, so we have the bulk of people, I suppose, between 25 to 60 or thereabouts, but a good spread of age. And then within Northern Ireland, our most, um, where the people live the most that follow us are in the local area, so Newton Ards, Cumber and then spreading down um, to Dungannon. So there's quite a large reach within Northern Ireland. And then global reach. Um, 
it's 90 plus percent in the UK, but then going down through other countries with Philippines, United States, Ireland, Canada, Brazil, Uganda, Australia, India, Italy. And then I've borrowed, pardon? <laughs> And then I've borrowed a slide from Sermon Audio, and again, I apologise, David. Um, but Sermon Audio do really good analytics, um, and I like statistics, if you didn't already know. But um, they do a lot of um, good analytics and things you can, you can look at. So as David mentioned, there's 25 countries that we reach out to, and some that I picked out you know, as surprising as David already mentioned some, but some others I noticed we had 45 people in Sweden, which thought was unusual, seven in South Africa, and then we have um, sort of 285 in America, 268 in Canada. So there's quite a lot of people. Um, so one way we have used Facebook is to use the advertising feature, and we thank the session for allowing us to put some money towards paid advertising, and that allows us to promote events. So we've really just used that to promote our testimony evenings and our friends and family. So you'll have seen the little one-minute videos that we do, and those little invitations go out really just as a taster to allow people um, to become aware of the testimony and video works well on Facebook, so it's good to kind of um, get those in. I know some people don't like doing them, but it does really work well to promote um, the friends and family nights. Um, so that allows us to boost the post and it allows us to reach people who don't follow us. So we put in some key data, um, a, maybe geographical locations, what their likes are, and that way we can target people. Um, however, Facebook have tightened restrictions on that um, GDPR, I suppose, being a reason, and some people then can opt out and don't um, allow adver adverts to be shown on their Facebook page. So it has restricted, and we've noticed it hasn't just been as successful as it used to be. But as David mentioned, Ford Arnold's testimony was um, one of our most viewed posts um, over the past year. Um, so we had over 14,000 people reached with that invitation on the Facebook um, paid advert. Um, 253 people responded, so either through likes, comments, shares, um, we had 58 shares in the invitation and then 24 in the live service with 4,200 reached and then 2,900 total views on the actual live service um, that night. So if I don't mention shares, Robin will tell me off um, whenever the meeting's over. Um, we would really encourage you to like, comment, and share any posts. If you're on Facebook, I know everybody's not on Facebook, but if you are, and I know a lot of you already do, and we really um, do appreciate that, but if you like, comment, or share a post, that sends a notification to your friends. So it may say, Janice Cook liked such and such a post, and then your friends see that, so automatically you have reached your friends, which then can become a ripple effect and it gets out beyond um, the followers of Cumber Free Presbyterian Facebook page. So please do um, help us um, promote what's going on within the church um, by doing that. It doesn't cost anything, it literally takes half a second. So please um, like, comment and share if you can. Um, as mentioned, Robin posts the daily verse every day, and this particular verse was the most, um, the, or the post with the most reach for the daily verse. So just to read it out, First Peter chapter 5, verse 6, humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. 
And I think it's, it's a very apt verse for it to be our most um, popular verse um, over the past year. So and you can see it reached over 1,100 people with 72 reactions, comments or, or shares. Um, getting towards the end of my report, but I think it's important to mention the encouragement, well, I think, to our minister that Facebook has been. Um, I have heard him saying from the pulpit um, about he, you know, asks the congregation to say amen and people have commented, is there a congregation? I don't hear um, any loud amens. But within Facebook, we do see um, very, <laughs> they're invisible amens, but we do see amens and praise the Lord's um, being commented on the posts as Reverend Martin preaches. So it is an encouragement um, when people do interact with um, during the live services and um, those can be viewed and looked at after. Um, there are regular comments and feedback that he does get, um, you know, that it's been a blessing or another powerful message or things like that. But I just wanted to read one that was received on Sunday past. And it says, Reverend Martin, we were truly blessed listening to your message this morning. Touched our hearts. God bless. So I think, you know, we maybe speak to Reverend Martin at the door or, you know, um, pass comment on the service. But it's, it's really nice to sort of somebody takes the time to write and comment. And um, I think it's nice that, as I said before, that virtual congregation starts to become real and we start to know who's listening in and, and get feedback from them as well as see, see their names appear as they, they check in. Um, and there are um, private messages then that are sent also. Um, so just really to conclude, how can you help social media outreach? And um, it is, as say, Robin and I, we're a team actually physically doing this and keeping an eye on things, but as David mentioned, there's a wider team, wider media team, but you also can be part of the team. And um, we'd encourage you really to be mindful if you can, and are happy to, to like, comment, and share on the posts um, as appropriate. If any of you don't have Facebook and you're wondering what is this all about, I don't really understand it. If you would like any help, I'm going to offer, I will help you <laughs> set up a Facebook account, teach you how to use it. So if you would like that, ask me and I will help. Um, I'll not volunteer Robin <laughs> because, um, well, he could do it, but he might say he can't. But I would um, be glad to help you. So if anyone would like to set up a Facebook account and just watch what's going on or, or see the daily verse or anything like that, let me know and I'll, I'll gladly help you. Um, prayers, we would covet prayers for the social media um, work. Um, it is reaching people who are unsaved and who don't go to church. Um, and as said, through those notifications or um, shares that people get. Um, so please pray that you know they would, as David said, click in for more than a couple of seconds, that they would listen in. And um, those that do listen in regularly, who are unsaved, that the Holy Spirit would move in their heart. Um, also encourage believers. Um, we do know Reverend Martin prays for those in the congregation that can't get out, but there is that virtual congregation too who can't get out, who are believers. And I suppose it's good to remember them that they would be encouraged as well. Um, finally, I would ask you to pray, pray for vigilance for Robin and myself as we monitor the Facebook page. So. Um, it's, I suppose, a 24-7 job, um, as often messages come in um, during the night, late at night, um, early morning, you know, or 
when you're in the middle of work and something happens. So do pray that we will be vigilant and see those messages come in. There have been um, some negative comments and whether you want to use it as an attack or whatever, but we have seen that over the past year. And um, I remember one night I noticed something and I was up for, it was maybe 12, half 12 at night, and I was up for an hour trying to write panic, shut things down, close off, just to try and um, keep things, you know, clean within um, and, and nothing untoward on the page. So just would ask you please to pray for vigilance for Robert and I, or Robin and I, and also that we, we would be very careful in how we would communicate with people because quite often you can write something at speed and think, oh, right, that's that, done, send, and it's gone, and it's out there, and it's visible, and screenshots can be, can be took, shared, etc. So please do pray that we will be mindful and um, very careful in how we communicate and the words we use. Um, Finally, we'd just like to give God the glory for everything that's been done within Facebook um, with over this past three years, I think it's been now, um, and we'd like to publicly thank God for his blessing upon us and the media work and for um, his help to Robin and I and that we um, value your prayers. Thank you. And just finally... Um, just um, leave you with the one lesson from tonight. Share with your Facebook friends. Um, so just think of it as an invitation to a meeting. If you're liking or sharing, it's, um, you're inviting someone out to a meeting for one of our events. And just leave you with um, this verse. And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us and establish thou the work of our hands upon us. Yea, the work of our hands, establish thy it. Thank you. Now just before we come to our season of prayer, I'd like to thank our online uh, community for tuning in this evening. It's at this point in our services on the Tuesday evenings that we bid you farewell as we get down to prayer. So we do appreciate your support and uh, we trust the Lord will richly bless you. As we shut down Facebook, Sermon Audio on YouTube uh, and we say farewell, uh, you are in our thoughts and prayers. You can remember us and also our brother Colin McKee in your prayers. I did have a little check just as a...